You always see the crocheting girlies living their best life. They're living, laughing, loving. And I don't think I've ever seen that same level of joy in a knitting girly. I feel like by the end of a project, the only thing a knitting girly feels is relief that it's over. And this video has made me understand why. <laughs> Hi friends! My name is Angie, this is my channel Maybe I'll Read Today where we talk about books that I may or may not have read. But for the longest time I've been wanting to like expand outside of just talking about reading. I've already like included little like craft updates here and there in vlogs but I wanted to just like focus on some crafting. This is not going to be a pattern video. We're just going to be following my journey in creating different garments but I'm not going to include step-by-step -step patterns because I'm not familiar enough with pattern making to do that. For like historical context, I have been knitting on and off since like 2017 and I recently learned how to crochet about a year ago. The problem with that is that I have a lot of yarn now. If you look behind me right there, that's my yarn corner. So similar to my goal of like focusing on all the books that I own, I also really want to use all of the yarn that I have. So I've been kind of like racking my brain a creative way to get through all of this yarn instead of just making like blankets after blankets. And I thought it would be really fun to recreate different tops from the original Sailor Moon anime. Because if you've seen the original Sailor Moon anime, you know that their outfits are top notch. So I've picked out five different looks. I'll put them all up here and we're gonna make them in this video. That's it, that's the bit. I think we're gonna start with the pink sweater first. So the first step of that is actually just getting my measurements. Assuming that I'm gonna need the measurement of like my neck area, my arms, my bust. If I'm just doing it top down, I don't really have to measure how long I wanna make it because I can just figure that out as I try it on theoretically but for this top I'm going to use well loved knits video on creating a one piece sweater as a reference point the only glaring issue is that in her videos she's using a really chunky yarn and for this top I'm going to be using a very small yarn <laughs> so step one is doing research Step two is taking measurements. Step three is taking this apart because I started this as a sweater vest inspired by like the Wednesday Adams like crochet sweater, mostly because I love these two colors together, but I kind of hate this pattern. Like the more I started working on it, I was like this, I don't want to wear this on my body. So we have to unravel all of this and then we can, we can get started. A huge update for you. I'm telling you right now, I haven't even casted on any stitches. But what I can tell you is that we've been doing a lot of math and we've made some swatches. This is the first swatch that I made. I originally wanted this to be like a single strand project, but after making this swatch, something about it just didn't feel right to me. It just felt a little like. I just worried that using one strand would make the sweater lay more flat than I want it to. Because if you look at the picture, which we'll be referencing a lot, because that's the whole point of this video, it looks like it has some like structure to it. And so I made a second swatch using two strands. I personally like this one a lot more. And I think the ribbing is just like way more noticeable. And also with my idea of having like a folded neck, I think it's gonna look good like this compared to Miss Wimpy right here. So my only real update is that we're doing a double-stranded project. Hey, we have an update. Check it out. I divided the sleeves last night and this is where we're at. I was initially really nervous about the math that I did because you had to use your swatch to figure out how many cast on stitches you needed to connect the front and back panel. And I'm math bad. I think it's gonna be a touch snug in the chest area. And that's mostly because I just forget that I have this going on. Literally every single time that I make myself a top, the chest ends up being a little too tight because I'm like, who are these? What are they doing here? But I think I cast on enough stitches that it's gonna be like tight but comfortable. So I'm still feeling optimistic about my math and my project and where we're at. So the next step is really just to keep going. See you when we're up to the sleeves, I guess. I don't know about you, but I'm really excited. I think this is gonna be fantastic. I'm literally so annoyed that this angle is now where I get the best lighting during the winter. Like, it's just like, it's so stupid. And then you get to witness all of my garbage on my desk. But we have an update. I finished the body like two or three days ago. 
again super simple i just had to keep going and then i did the ribbing and then i cast it off super straightforward now we're working on one of the sleeves when i originally picked up the stitches for the sleeves i realized i made it too wide like i had the full intention of having like balloonish sleeves but it was like cartoonishly balloonish so i did a couple of rounds of decreases and i kind of goofed it because like you can clearly see the decreases i thought i was being very clever and very sneaky but it's like really obvious i'm hoping when i block it it'll stretch the stitches out a little bit to make it slightly more subtle and i'm probably gonna change the decrease stitch style in the next one or for consistency's sake i'm just gonna make both sides a little ugly i haven't decided yet but i bet you're curious so we got to do a try on was that a seamless TikTok transition? Probably not, I'm 80 years old. Anyways, this is it on. It's a little cropped. I probably could have done a few stitches of the body before transitioning to the ribbing, but I didn't want to. I like things a little cropped and I'm lucky enough that I have a relatively like short torso so that I can get away with things that are a little more cropped. So the body, looks great now we're just on the sleeve and similar to the body we just have to keep going until it's long enough to cast off and then we got to do it all over again <laughs> hello are you freaking serious also i just want to put it out there i did a whole outfit recreating one of sailor moon's looks and it doesn't even matter because you can't even freaking see it can you believe i'm wearing tights right now and not only am i wearing tights I freaking ripped these tights from butt to ankle. I lost a pair of tights and you can't even see the fit. You can't even see the fit. I'm really proud of myself. This is a raglan seamless top. It's comfy, it's warm, and it looks almost exactly like I wanted it to. And isn't that what knitting is all about? having something almost exactly like you wanted to, but still not yet there. Because although I'm really proud of it, this was the first time I was doing this and I recognize all of the improvements that I could have done along the way. It was definitely a learning experience. The things that I do love is the color. This is like one of my favorite yarn colors. I think she's so flirty, fun and sexy and cool. Love the mock neck. That came out exactly how I imagined, exactly how I envisioned and dreamed and now we're living it. Although I have several complaints about the sleeves, I do like how they are long enough that I can like stretch them out to be sweater posies, but then also if I want to be like, I don't even know the word, but they also like naturally stop at the wrist. And then if I'm feeling extra flirty and fun, the cuffs are tight enough that they can like be here and they're not going to slip and slide. And so that's kind of nice. So this is, this is it. But it's not it because we still have several pieces more to go. So the next piece I want to work on is this outfit, which isn't really an outfit. It's just a bathing suit with some ribbons on it. And my original idea was to just make a basic pink vest and then go to Michael's and get ribbon and then just attach them on. But the more I thought about it, the more I kind of hated that idea because a basic pink vest with some ribbons on it isn't exactly the most wearable thing in the world. While I do want to use up my yarn, and recreate Sailor Moon pieces. I also want to wear them. You know, it'll be a waste of yarn to create a piece and then it just kind of sits there. So instead, this next piece is going to be more of a inspired by this fit. So we're gonna get real close and I hope you don't mind. But like I said, this was my original sketch, basic vest with some ribbons on it. It's not really working out for me. So I spent a lot of last night sketching other potential fits and I had these three options. The first is this tank top open back with a ribbon that ties it together which I think is really cute, but I'm not really an open back kind of gal. Although it's like modernized and wearable, it's not wearable for me and my style. So then I started playing with other ideas. I have this keyhole piece. I was also playing with the idea of like a center keyhole with like two ribbons because the outfit has multiple ribbons. And I wanted to incorporate that in some way. This doesn't really work with like a broad strap hanging in the middle of there so that ultimately wasn't an option either i also kind of had this cop out option which would have just been like a pink tube top and yellow straps instead i settled on the keyhole thing so i made a more in-depth sketch here the idea is that the body of the top is going to be pink and then the border around the neck holes the arm holes and the tie are going to be a yellow to kind of incorporate that whole look so i did start this yesterday but i don't I haven't, I didn't. I quite literally made my foundation chain and then I got tired and I stopped. This is the pink we're using. 
And then I have this tiny ball of yellow yarn and I'm a touch concerned that it's not going to be enough for everything that I want to use it for. But I am also just, just staying positive. I think if I make the ties thin enough that this will be enough for the border and the tie. If not, I might have to order another ball of this color, which is kind of stupid when you think about how little this yellow is incorporated into this top. But if I do order another ball, that gives me the opportunity to make the bow thicker and that might be more fun and sexy and cool. A problem for another day. I'm off to the side like this because I want you to appreciate this baby wavy, but I wanted to give a small update because it is a relatively small update. I have frogged and re-crocheted this front panel at least four times. I think we're in a good place now. This is what I have so far. It's gonna sit like this, so I have to do the rest of this. I guess the biggest update is that I was originally gonna like crochet a space for the armholes, but my original plan was to crochet a space for the armholes in the front and to leave the back as just a square. And then I was thinking about it laying in bed at like three in the morning. And I was like, that literally doesn't make any sense because then when I sew it together, there's gonna be like an extra space base of the back panel just like hanging off of the shirt that's gonna look so stupid and so we're making the front panel a square too if anything this pattern got just so much more simpler basically all i did was take the measurement of my torso i did a foundation chain of whatever that measurement is and i've just been doing half double crochets back and forth so my plan is to just keep going until i get to like this measurement whatever that is and then i'll decrease for whatever this measurement is and then just repeat here and that's it if you don't want to do a neck hole you can just go straight across but if you do you just have to figure out how deep you want the neck to go that's all i got for you update. I am crying because I think I got something in my eye, but it does make this update a little bit more dramatic because I think I hate this top. So I did the front panel. I also finished the back panel the other day. Like I said before, the back panel is just a square. Can you see that? That's kind of nice. And so I sewed in the shoulders, but like the more I look at it, the more I'm like, what am I even doing? One of my concerns is like the color. I feel like it's coming off more curvy than Sailor Moon and that's upsetting for me. And then the shape, I'm just like, I don't know. It like, it looks so angular to me that I'm like, is this it? Is this a good top? I don't want to start over. So I'm trying to trust the process. And hopefully as I get to the end of it, it actually looks and feels good. Hi! Turns out I was just being a freaking baby yesterday. Here is the finished product. I really like the color combination now. I think the yellow really like tones down the pink. Maybe if the yarn was thicker, it would tone it down even more, but you saw what I was working with. I didn't have a lot, which also leads to the ties being relatively thin, which is like another thing that I would have liked to make thicker, but we just didn't have the resources for it. So I'm sure you're curious. So here it is. Fun flirty cool. I think it's going to be really nice for like the springtime. Overall, I think it's really sweet looking. If I had to rate this project, I'd give it like a three, a three and a half. Fits me great. Looks exactly like how I sketched it, but there's something about it that I'm still not like super pleased with. Maybe my idea just like wasn't it, but it was the it for the moment. Like I do wish that this could have been like more adjacent to the actual cartoon, but again, I wanted it to be wearable for like an everyday kind of situation as well. But overall, not bad. So we already started the next project. We're going to be doing this top. This top is going to be super freaking simple and I already started it and I already did the hard part. Literally perfect color match. There's the flower. In the cartoon I think the top was originally like a closed back top. I decided to do like a corset back so I measured my bust. I subtracted six inches so that there is space in the back to actually do the little ribbon tie thing. But really we're in easy street now because I just have to double crochet until I get to the length that I want it to be and then I just have to double crochet some straps and then we're done. I feel like the first half of this vlog was like really detailed with updates and that's just because these projects are getting smaller and smaller. I started with the hardest one honey, honey. and now we're just double crocheting. I have something of a project update for you but I am holding my phone so I'm doing this all one-handed. Uh, pray for me. This is the top. Like I mentioned in my last update, we're basically just doing double crochets until we're done. I can't really show you but it's looking really cute. Just, just, just take my word for it. It's covering my bust 
which is fantastic. But we still need to cover the rest of the torso. We need to do straps. We need to make the little stringy thing to like hold it all together. So the bad news is that we have so much more work to do and um, this is all I have left. I'm going to go to Joann's this weekend to buy another ball of this yarn. The other bad news that I have is that I don't think I have the label for this yarn because I was so confident that this was only gonna take one ball of yarn. So I was like, I don't need to save it. I can just get rid of it immediately for those watching. Keep the label until the project is done. Don't be like me. This project is on hiatus for right now. I think we're going to start this vest. I know in the picture it's a sweater. I just don't think I have enough orange yarn to make a full sweater. And so we're gonna make it a vest. I don't really have a sketch for this. I know I want it to be boxy. I know I want it to be oversized. So the first step is to make a swatch. And because I want this to be a little loose, flowy, and boxy, I think I'm gonna use like larger needles than suggested. I also don't have the label for this, but I'm sure like the suggested needle size is probably like five millimeters. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna double that. So we're gonna do like 10 and a half or whatever I own. I did my swatch. I got my measurements. It's very cute. I'm probably gonna keep this as a bookmark. And then I started a cast on for this vest and my needles broke. The like cable of the needle just like broke off. And then when I tried to super glue it back on together, it didn't align good, which was okay, partly my fault. But now they're essentially useless. So this my friends, is also on hiatus until I can get my ass to Joanne's. Hi, my name is Angie and I made some financial mistakes today. I finally got the chance to go to Joanne's and then not only did I go to Joanne's, I went to Michael's as well and I did some damage. So let's just do a quick haul, I guess. The first is the reason I actually went to Joann's. I needed more of this color. Then I got this jumbo yarn. And my plan with this, which might be a whole separate video, is to make a matching sweater and skirt set. When I went to Michael's, they were having a buy one, get one free sale. And so I was like, all right, well, I need to take advantage of this. And so I got three balls of this yarn. It's like this navy blue with these like little flechitas de, de orange and white and red and so I think that's really sweet I'm planning on making a cardigan with this with like a really sweet little collar situation going on I think it'll be really nice and you might be wondering buy one get one free those are only three balls you dingus um, that's okay, because I got this one for free. This is like a burgundy maroonish color. And so this was a necessary purchase because I'm going to use this color for the stars on the, the orange vest. That's my haul. We're going to refocus on this bad boy. And we might even like start casting on for this project. Now that I have the needles, we can just like go nuts. Hi, it's been a while. Haven't been feeling super good in the mental health. And also I've been kind of hating my hair, so it's... It's been a struggle recording. I think it's just because it's growing out. I'm trying my hardest to stay strong and not like fuck with it too much because I do have a hair appointment in a couple of weeks. But I figured we really got to wrap this video up. And I do have some updates for you. The first is that I finished a little project. If you can tell from these little strappies right here. So I'm going to take a step back so you can appreciate what I've been doing with my life. Check it out. It's honestly one of my best works. And I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing because this project is literally just one big rectangle and two little rectangles. But isn't that the beauty of crocheting? Everything is just a rectangle, except for when it's not. I think in my last update, we were like up to here. And as far as the steps go, you keep double crocheting until you get up to here. And then you double crochet some more to do these things. And that's it. But I'm super happy with this top. I think it's definitely my favorite. I also really like it as a layering piece. And I think it's also going to be really nice in the summer when you could just like wear it solo. I think if I learn how to make more little like cutouts, that would be really fun. Like maybe a star or like a heart or something. I could do it in different colors and whatever. So this top is done. And we have one last project. One last project, which is this sweater. But we've already talked about it. We're making it a sweater vest. We just don't have enough yarn. And the good news is that I already finished most of it. Honey, honey. Check it out. Wait, no. 
Don't check it out yet. Check it out. This is the front panel. And for this vest, I've been like partially referencing a pattern that I own. It is called the Classic Vest by Art by Kara Lees. I think that's their Instagram handle. I'll also include them in the description below. But the Classic Vest is a really great pattern because it kind of gives you a run through on how to make a classic vest. I've used it multiple times in the past when making like a round neck vest. I've never attempted the v-neck. So once I get to the actual ribbing of the v-neck, I'll be like heavily referencing this pattern. But the reason I say I'm partially referencing this pattern at this point is because I'm not using the like measurements that they're using. They have like graded sizes and I kind of just cast it on a multiple of four to get my two by two ribbing and I've been kind of just like winging the like the shape of the body of the vest. But once I get here, Kara Lee's is gonna save me because I've never done a v-neck before. I hope you don't mind this like ratio change. I don't feel like setting up my tripod and I have one of those like Android flippy phones which means that I can just like fold it in half and record like this. So that's exactly what we're doing. Honestly, I don't know why I haven't done this sooner. But here is a knitting update. We are making amazing progress. Honey, honey. We are nearing the end. Basically, we finished all the armhole decreases and now we're just on back panel island. I just have to keep going straight up till I get it to this length. Have I counted the rows to make sure they're even? No. Have I measured anything? Also no. <laughs> But I have like a ways to go before I really have to start worrying about measuring so I'm just gonna keep going until I actually have to like pay attention. I have minor concerns regarding like yarn stock but I think I should be fine because I have this much left. But I swear to god if I have to put another project on hiatus to order more yarn just to finish this one video, I'm gonna be very annoyed. This video has taken longer than I could have ever expected. Like I started this in October. It is currently December 15th. I can't wait for this to be over honey, honey. because I have all of those new yarns that I have such amazing ideas for. I just like need to focus on this. I need this to be over. I'm really excited about this, but I'm also really tired. So here's what we got. I actually technically finished it yesterday, but then when I tried it on, the arm ribbing was like flaring out and it looked so stupid. And so I had to unravel both arms. And I realized that part of the problem is not only did I make it too wide, but I made the increases like too deep. So when I actually did the armholes, it was like I was having these two little fins sticking out and it was very much giving Finding Nemo. So I had to unravel everything, uh, literally had to like lay down for 15 minutes to kind of settle my nerves. Honey, honey. And then I did an invisible seam on the side of each vest to kind of just take away a few inches. So now when you flip it inside out, I actually have these two little fins just tucked away. I haven't really decided what I'm gonna do with them yet. I have considered like steaking adjacent it. And if you don't know what steaking is, it's when you like knit in the round and then you cut into it to create two panels. It's mostly used for like color work so you don't have to purl any rows. Anyways, I read a couple of Reddit threads about steaking and it said, that you should only do that with wool yarn because wool can felt and so nothing is going to unravel and you definitely should not do it with cotton yarn so i was like great however i just had the idea that i could unravel this invisible seam that was like keeping the two sides together and then maybe i can just like sew each panel back onto itself and then maybe it'll be a little more subtle than just like a random bulk on each end honey, honey. maybe i'll try that now because i'm currently in another dilemma with this freaking vest. And my current dilemma is I don't know if I want to continue doing this ribbed sleeve situation because even when I tried it on it gives like this cap sleeve effect that I don't know if I'm super into or if I should just single crochet the ends to clean it up but like keep it naked like this. I guess I'll work on trying to hide these fins and then we still have to do the double stitching. But at this point in my life the double stitching is the least of my concerns. I just want this shape to like actually look like a vest. You've got, You've a, big got a big storm, storm coming. coming. So I decided I'm gonna unravel the vest. I hate myself for this, but it's like if I already had to make so many adjustments just to make it fit and I have the power to redo it and actually make it fit right without making it like it just makes sense for me to start over. This is the right decision. Like this, it's the logical, smart, beautiful thing to do. It's just I hate that I have to do it. Hello! 
I have two developments for you. One, we're just going to follow the pattern. I literally have a pattern. I don't know why I was trying to reinvent the wheel, but we're no longer doing our own math. We're no longer freehanding anything. Art by Kara Lees gave us the measurements, and so that's what we're doing. And after two Paddington movies and one episode of X-Files, we've done it. Well, we haven't done it yet, but this is, this is as far as we've gotten. So I'm already like halfway through the front panel, right? Which means if I watch Paddington six more times, then we are done with the shape of the vest. Obviously, I'm not going to watch Paddington six more times, but we are going to be watching a lot of movies and listening to a lot of audiobooks to get through this. I was really stressed earlier, and now that I've seen how much progress I've made in one movie marathon, I'm feeling a lot less stressed. So things are looking up again. I'm confident again. I'm having fun again. So after watching Saltburn, Kung Fu Panda, and several episodes of The X-Files. We have finished the front part, and we are almost done with the back panel. We'll hang out again once I sew the pieces together and I can actually try it on. This is looking a lot more oversized now that I have it next to me in comparison to my body, but it's meant to be oversized, so I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Finish the vest, did, did the ribbing and what have you yesterday. I didn't block it the way you're supposed to block it because this is like cotton yarn. I don't know, I feel like it's more like lenient than wool, like the stakes are just lower. I don't know if that's true. That's just me speaking out of my butt. So instead of like traditionally blocking it and like laying it flat, etc, etc, I hand washed it and then I threw it in the dryer for like 10 minutes. I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but it is still a little damp, so we're not going to work on the double stitching today. But just for reference, I found this star pattern on Pinterest and it comes from like this friendship bracelet website and if you're interested I'll put that in the description below as well. I'm trying my best to like link all of my sources for this adventure. And our next clip is going to be our last one probably. The final reveal, the final wrap up, the final thoughts. <laughs> Hi, we did it. We're at the end of this vlog. I have all my stuff here. Let's wrap this up. Here she is. The girl, the icon, the legend, the moment. And although she gave me so many problems, I think it was all worth it in the end because she just looks so clean, so fresh, so cute. I just love all the details in this. And also, as far as the stars go, I did modify the star because I didn't like how it looked. I'm gonna put my modified star on screen and you can screenshot if you like this more. Um, enjoy. A lot of time and effort went into this sweater vest, which is annoying but also I think made it worth it in the end because I just feel like it's so clean, it's so neat, and that makes me really happy. So I bet you're wondering, let's put this bad boy on and then we can appreciate it together. Before we try on this vest, I have to take off all of my clothes. Don't report me to Mr. YouTube. But here she is. Is it still a touch oversized? Did I not super nail the armholes? Perhaps. I still really like the boxiness of it and that was kind of the point. I wanted it to be like loose and chill. I think this is my favorite and so actually let's let's sit back down so I can do like final thoughts and we can end this gosh darn video. Wow that was fun. So I figured the best way to finish up this video is to kind of like rank what everything I made. So starting at the bottom, and I don't think this comes as a surprise to anybody, my least favorite piece has to be this top. There's just nothing about it that like sparks joy for me. And I dislike it so much that I've never even bothered to sew in the ends because I don't think this is this yarn's final form. So I just like didn't, I just didn't do anything. I would like to frog this one day and like try to really make something out of it and perhaps even do my original sketch which is like mildly annoying to me but maybe I should have just listened to my own like intuition from the jump. I don't see myself doing that anytime soon so that video is not going to come out for a couple of months probably but I think it is something that I would like to do in the future because like I just dislike this so much. Number three is honestly kind of surprising to me. But I would have to say it's this sweater. Love the color, love the shape, love a lot of the things about it, but there are still a lot of room for improvement. Just because this was my first raglan sweater, I didn't really understand like the measurements of it all. It fits fine, it's comfortable enough, but I know what to do now to make it better. She's, she's just like perfectly fine. So surprisingly that makes this 
Number two, there was just something about this shape and this top that was like really exciting and fun for me. And it's just like exactly how I envisioned it, exactly how the picture was, which makes our problem child our number one. If you had asked me when I was frogging this, whether this was gonna be my number one project, I would have screamed in your face because I hated this project. I was like this close to like just giving up completely. I'm really glad that I like stuck it out despite the aggravation and the time spent, the frogging and the unfrogging and the frogging again. I do think it made it all worth it in the end. Shout out to Art by Kara Lees because her pattern saved me, but also shout out to myself because I did this. So that's the video. I'm finally free from this hell that I created for myself, which means that you're finally free too. I love that for us. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great day. And I hope you don't mind if we do more of these kinds of things in the future. I don't always want to talk about books, so I feel like bringing knitting into this channel is like a nice way to substitute book stuff. And I don't know if this vlog format was the way to do it, this was an experiment, perhaps it will change in the future, but I truly hope you don't mind because I'm not asking permission, we are probably going to do more knitting crochet content on this channel.